everyone, and welcome to another News Kulam video. Uh, you know, I realize that I haven't done a whole lot of updates lately. I've been doing a lot of work uh, behind the scenes, not to make too many excuses, but uh, between my full-time job, uh, apparently I'm a, now a professional gamer, whatever, doing renovations on the house, fixing up the property, and trying uh, to get these Ford Ranger Electrics up and running again. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to do some videos. I have some videos that I've done and I've uploaded, uh, but I didn't publish them. I didn't really feel like it was necessarily the right time to do that yet. Um, so there are some updates and some, some things that I've done, but, uh, right now though, uh, I, I'm still sort of sorting out the battery for, or at least the first battery for this, uh, Ford Ranger electric, the 2000, um, NIM originally, uh, Ford Ranger Electric, the white one that was registered in California. So everything was clean in terms of getting this like licensed and ready for uh, road use. But, um, you know, not to mention the rust issue and everything else on the red one. Um, but what I wanted to talk about right now uh, wasn't really about putting the battery together uh, so much as it is about sourcing uh, the battery because electric vehicle batteries are not easy to come by right now um, in terms of just off-the-shelf turnkey batteries that you can use. Uh, Ford just announced their um, uh, Illuminator, right, E-crate motor that doesn't even have a traction inverter, uh, but even if it did, uh, good luck sourcing a battery that can support a 200 kilowatt or more motor. Um, so there's a lot of problems with sourcing batteries. So most of us have have been having to resort to buying cells from overseas, in particular from China. And, you know, just cutting to the chase, it's already in the title, so you know where I'm going with this. Um, but I canceled my um, AliExpress account, and I wanted to explain why. And, and it's purely due to their business practices. And yeah, this is kind of publicly calling them out, because I know a lot of people have asked about feedback, uh, they know that I purchased what were listed as 280 uh, um, amp hour cells, or in the case of the ESAR, uh, ESARE, um, they were claiming a 420 amp hour cell, which I knew was false, but I kind of wanted to test. I thought they might actually be 280 amp hour anyway. Um, but after capacity tested them, they turned out to only be about 240 amp hour. Um, and this is all after I had already gotten a, an initial shipment and really enough batteries uh, to support one Ford Ranger EV conversion that were legitimately 280 amp hours. Um, you know, what I've learned over the years now is that those cells that I got originally um, from Lito Kala through uh, AliExpress uh, were EVE 280 amp hour cells. That's why they consistently tested out at about 283 to 285 amp hours in capacity testing. So they they aren't grade A cells in the sense that they're not pristine, right? So I, I got a, um, you know, a lot of them have like little blemishes on them, things like that. So they're not, they're not pristine cells, but they do what I want them to do, which is they have 280 amp hours of energy capacity. That's what they were advertised as. That's what I bought. That's what I wanted to get. And so Lito Kala was originally, they were good to work with. They didn't ship the batteries well. And some of the dinging and some of the damage to the cells and blemishes came during shipment because they weren't the greatest at shipping them. But again, that wasn't a huge deal shipping was free. Um, it took a long time, but they sent me what they said they were going to send me, at least initially. Like I said, I tried out this ESAR, um, ES, ESARE um, supplier from uh, AliExpress, and these turned out to definitely not be 400 and uh, 20 amp hour cells. And like I said, even though they're the same exact format, I thought they might be the 280 amp hour cells. They're not even that. Uh, they put this fake uh, CE label over this to basically cover up the fact that they had completely scratched out the barcode on the top of the cell. So you don't even know, um, you know, you put this back down so it's nice and insulated, but you don't even know 
uh, what you're getting, right? This is just a uh, just, this is just a blank cell with welded terminals. I have no idea what it is. Well, um, I, I just know that it tested out at 240 amp hours instead of the 420 that they promised. And I escalated to AliExpress. And even though I provided all the information, I did videos, I did photos, I had all of the information um, related to the capacity, actual capacity of these cells, they still rejected every single remedy that I suggested, including simply, you know, discounting me or refunding me the difference in capacity, the promised capacity. Um, you know, a lot of these, these Chinese companies, they get away with this because they don't label their boxes for lithium. Um, and shipping these back to get a full refund, one, there's no guarantee they would have given me a refund even if they got them back, but the cost of shipping them back was more than the actual battery itself. Uh, so there's no recourse in terms of returns or anything else. <clears throat> and the fact that, um, the fact that uh, it was essentially my word against ESARE and AliExpress just defaults to, we believe our seller we don't believe the buyer. Um, and so even in the face of evidence, they rejected any sort of recourse whatsoever. Now, um, you know, I get it, right? And this is something that's just fundamental to the way that AliExpress does business because I, they are what I would describe as an aggregator. Um, Amazon is the same way. And I'm not a huge fan of Amazon either, but if I get a faulty product from Amazon, uh, it's really a no-fault return. That seller has to give me the promised product in return. All I have to do is have a shipping label verifying that I sent it back. So um, they're not just letting the buyers off scot-free. They're holding you accountable, uh, but they are also aren't like just believing their, their sellers offhand, which is what AliExpress appears to be doing. Um, as opposed to something like Alibaba, where I, I compared to an aggregator, right? Or they would be more of what I would consider a wholesale, uh, a broker that's working with people who are buying wholesale and selling retail. So they're just really the middleman, um, and you know that's what I would recommend buying Chinese LFP cells moving forward. Is if you know you like CATL, if you know you like Eve cells buy directly from a seller who's working with Eve or CATL or whomever and negotiate a price person to person with that company as opposed to AliExpress, which has, the, like I said, the ESARE or the Lito Kala where there's, um, you know, the, the Lito Kala in particular, what they're doing is they're getting leftover stock and they're just advertising it as whatever and selling it. Um, and so, and this is, this is the one that really burned me because, again, advertised as a 280 amp hour cell. And uh, I tested them and they actually tested out the same as those ESARE cells, about 240 amp hours. So well short of the 280 amp hours I got from Lito Kala from before. And this is the one where I thought, well, this is a slam dunk, right? Because um, not only did they test that, when I peel this back, at least Lito Kala had the common decency to not, uh, you know, remove the barcode. Well, this barcode verifies that these are 200 and, yeah, they're the 768 watt hour CATL batteries, which CATL lists as 240 amp hours. So these are not 280 amp hour cells. So um, I thought, well, shoot, I have the exact barcode. I have the exact product code for this. Sent it in um, requesting some form of reimbursement uh, and AliExpress rejected it. Why? All Lito Kala said was, no, we sent you what we said we would send you, the 280 amp hour cells. AliExpress said, well, they said it was good, so we're going to believe them. I have photographic evidence. I have video evidence of capacity tests, everything else. Even in the face of that, uh, AliExpress sided with their seller over a buyer. 
I just can't, I can't do that. Right. So that's essentially my story as to why I canceled my AliExpress membership. Now, I don't know that, that there's any connection, uh, but I do know that one of my credit cards within a week of me completely closing out my, my AliExpress account was hit with a $2,500 fraudulent charge, which, you know, turned off my credit card. I shut it down. I don't know if there's a connection, but that's pretty convenient timing if you ask me. So these are just not the type of people that you want to do business with. So I guess, like I said, to close, right now we're sort of in a pickle of a dilly of a jam in the United States. If you want batteries for EV conversions, you pretty much have to buy them either used or overseas. And used, you, you don't know what you're getting necessarily, or you're not really getting necessarily good cells. Um, where if you want something new, something safe, something easy to work with, like these, you know, EVE 280 amp hour LFP cells, really the only option is at this point, in my opinion, finding direct sellers who are working with EVE or working with CATL and buying and negotiating the price directly with them. You're still going to have to go through someplace like Alibaba um, as like that broker middleman, but at least you're not dealing with an aggregator like AliExpress where they're not going to protect you even if your seller uh, basically just openly defrauds you. So that's it. Um, like I said, more videos. I'll, I'll, I have a lot of stuff upcoming, but I, like I said, I've been really busy. I just wanted to kind of give uh, a final update on what happened with these LFP cells. Um, you know, right now I'm in the process of packaging uh, cell groups. Uh, I figured out how all the cells fit into the Ford Range or electric packs. So, um, yeah, I'm just moving forward with that. It's kind of like the hard, tedious part now. Um, but um, just trying to make time for it and do it safely, proper tools, proper hookups, everything else like that. So I'd love to hear what you, you think. What, what have your experiences been with AliExpress? Have you run into the same sort of friction uh, with them defending their sellers over you, even in the face of evidence that proves that they're defrauding their buyers? Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel, and uh, I'll try to keep up as much content as I can. So thank you for watching.